Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. Insomniac Games have confirmed that the PlayStation 5 is utilizing machine learning for an update in Spider-Man. This is for muscle deformation and other things, which makes models look more realistic. We'll go into the details in just a moment. But this tech is actually very impressive and has been officially confirmed by Insomniac Games to be utilizing inference on the PS5's GPU and is also running at the backbone of this is Ziva RT. RT, by the way, is nothing to do with ray tracing. It means real time. And this software, well, you know what? Let me read this verbatim for you. Um, Ziva RT is a machine learning based technology that allows a user to get nearly film quality, and that's quite important, deformation results in real time. In particular, the software takes a set of representative high quality mesh shapes and poses and trains a machine learning model to learn how to deform and skin the mesh. Ziva RT allows for near film quality characters to be deployed in applications in real time. Real time basically means games rather than something like an offline renderer that we would expect for say a movie such as like Avatar, because obviously well, a game has pretty tight time constraints from one frame to another. So again, it does stress that it's utilizing training and inference methodology. So this has been further confirmed by Josh, who is an employee over at um, uh, Insomniac Games, that they are indeed using inference on the PS5's GPU. However, he cannot get specific exactly how it's used. We'll get more into that in just a moment. Also, just to clear things up, training is where you're initially training the code, that is machine learning, whatever that is. So whether it's how to recognize what a cat is or whether it's how to upsample from a lower resolution to a higher resolution, this is typically done on a high performance uh, server or something like that. Uh, NVIDIA utilizes supercomputers for DLSS. And then inference is what you would use on your home console or like a home GPU where the train code can then be run in real time. It's considerably less taxing. So this brings us then to the crux of the matter. Does this confirm that the PlayStation 5 has lower precision operations on its GPU? Well, we can almost certainly say that it has FP16 capabilities. After all, we saw that with the PS4 Pro. And the Xbox has already been confirmed at this point to have four and eight bit operations on its GPU. And desktop as well, we know that it has four and eight bit operations on well, that, because literally it's in the white paper itself. However, Sony have been ultra cagey as to what the PS5 can really do. And it gets even trickier when you consider that, just speaking more broadly, if you look at the PS5, it has a ton of customization, yes, but also a lot of features which Sony have basically added themselves. A great example of this is mesh shaders. They're just gone. They're not there. Or they were not that they're not there. It's just that they were never actually introduced to begin with. The reason is because Microsoft are using mesh shaders for the Xbox, yes, but Sony instead went a completely different route and they are using the geometry engine. Now this has probably got some wins and losses and it's way outside the scope of this video to discuss both. However, ultimately, it's not that uh, Sony have a loss there, it's just that they went a different route. Well, with lower precision operations, Microsoft definitely have been very vocal about this and it's for very good reason. Microsoft, you know, they do not have tensor cores like uh, NVIDIA does with the uh, Turing architecture or with the Ampere architecture on desktop. Instead, Microsoft though did want to ape a lot of those capabilities. And we saw this discussed actually when they were talking about um, upsampling with Forza. I think it was in like 2018 the presentation was. I already discussed direct ML versus uh, DLSS and uh, AMD's uh, FSR tech for upsampling. Machine learning, though, uh, for the Xbox is going to be very important because Microsoft's Direct ML framework is capable of doing a lot more than just upsampling. For example, in their official blog, they mention things like, for example, better AI, which is obviously only ever a good thing. And it is a framework. However, the backbone of this, of course, is that the GPU can run low precision operations like four or eight bit operations. And again, these are also present in the desktop, but these have not been confirmed to be present in the PlayStation 5 GPU. I think that logically, Sony can probably run these operations 
because their compute units are based on RDNA 2 tech. And remember, an architecture is not the same thing as the actual feature set of a GPU. A great example of this is Van Gogh from, the, uh, from AMD. is quite literally RDNA 2, but it doesn't have Infinity Cache. Just like the Xbox doesn't have Infinity Cache for its RDNA 2 implementation. It doesn't mean that it's anything less RDNA, it's just a feature. The question is whether the PS5 has the lower precision operations as its feature or not. And honestly, I think it probably does, but there is no confirmation one way or the other from what the developer stated here. In fact, I'm going to read this out verbatim. This is according to Josh DiCarlo, who again is an employee. Not sure how specific I can get for the specs now, but you are correct in the assumption that all final deformations are resulting in uh, via direct ML inference at runtime of the PS4 5 hardware. And there are no blend shape, skin decomp, or traditional tricks of the trade, although he has nothing against them, so they've not insulted him or anything naughty. And again, it was been confirmed by him a second time that it's running on inference. And he also mentions that this is not at the detriment of performance. He said, and I quote, we have a brilliant, we have brilliant engineers working with brilliant engineers and we're running as fast as the non-physically based version and it did not require any adjustments to the graphical settings. So this basically means there's no performance degradation. They didn't have to cut back resolution or whatever else to get this working. So it's a win-win in that respect and full credit to Sony, or I guess in this pay, uh, respect, uh, Insomniac's engineers for this, you know, kind of coolness. And it does look really good based on the photos I've seen. I'm going to admit something. I still haven't played Miles Morales. I've actually completed Spider-Man, the original like remaster of the PS4. I'm just starting to work on the DLC at the moment. And then I'm going to get onto Miles Morales. Uh, but anyway, getting back to the topic here. So I think that uh, I personally believe that we're going to see some very cool things with machine learning on the next gen consoles. And I think that Microsoft are going to be pushing this very heavily for the Xbox. One of the wins for Microsoft with the Xbox Series X is that just that they have quite a wide design. Both the PS5 and the Xbox's GPU are quite different from one another. Although they are based on a lot of the similar principles and tech, the reality is that Microsoft have quite a lot of customization in their GPU, which is just not present in desktop. And the same thing, of course, could be said for the PS5 with, for example, cache scrubbers. But the basic principle of the Xbox is a wider, slower, but very powerful design with tons of T-flops. A PS5, meanwhile, prioritizes in just getting data through the system, which can definitely have quite a lot of wins, including certain things like pixel pushing power. Say, try saying that three times fast. But yeah, getting back to the point though, this does mean that Microsoft does have a small edge when it comes to compute-based stuff. They could basically just throw a ton of compute at a situation until it cries and begs for mercy. But that doesn't mean that the PS5 can't do it. And Again, let's assume worst case, worst case scenario and it's using 16-bit operations. It's not necessarily that's bad. It is, however, slower because you can do less of them on the same compute unit, if that makes sense. You're basically, well, yeah, it, I guess you could just say it's kind of in the name. There is also the possibility it's not running on the CU at all, and instead it's running on, for example, the Tempest engine of the PS5. That is pure speculation on my part, so do not take that as confirmation. I'm just spitballing here, because ultimately the TE can do other things, and it's been essentially confirmed at this point it can do other things, and it's basically just a modified compute unit. But again, because the developers can't talk, because they're under well, just a ridiculous number of uh, NDAs, and because Sony aren't talking, we're just guessing. I assume, though, just with the verbiage that, you know, he can't talk about it yet, maybe Sony or, you know, one of these developers will eventually disclose it via this GDC or maybe a future D GDC, which would be absolutely awesome. You know, I'd love to know more, simply because, honestly, I'm just a geek and I want to kind of know this stuff. I mean, yeah, I just think it's very interesting. I've gone on record and said this before, but I really want to stress it here. 
neither console has really been pushed anywhere close to its limits. And while that's very typical from one generation to another, what I mean by that is that, you know, features aren't even being really heavily used at the moment. I've gone on record and said that I don't think mesh shaders for the Xbox have been used really at all for any games. In fact, I was told that not been used whatsoever for any currently released Xbox Series X game. And this is well, kind of leaving a lot of performance on the table because mesh shaders have so much potential to rewrite how the geometry pipeline works. I actually had a uh, discussion about this with NVIDIA and it's, you know, I put out a video on it. So if you want to know a lot more about mesh shaders, you can check that video out along with my exclusive about the um, mesh shaders on the Xbox. I'll try to remember to link them in the video description. With the PS5, it's very similar. M uh, Microsoft have mesh shaders, but they are not included of the PS5. Instead, they are using the geometry engine. I don't think developers have really gotten a handle of the GE at the moment, honestly. I, it's quite a powerful thing. You know, it, it definitely has a lot of potential, but it's not been used. And it's the same thing for mesh shaders. It, it's requiring quite a lot of rethinking of the, of the pipeline. And ultimately, a lot of developers just don't really need it. Like if you're creating a more simple indie experience, you don't really need to worry about mesh shaders. You can just kind of just go by as it is. So yeah, this gen is going to be really interesting. And I think that um, as compute really gets put, you know, pushed for the next couple of, uh, you know, the next couple of years, we're going to be seeing some really cool stuff on both the Xbox and the PlayStation. And it's going to be very interesting, in my opinion, also just to kind of see the basics of how these consoles are used. Uh, for example, SSDs, in my opinion, haven't been heavily used at the moment. We're seeing some good examples of it. You know, cut down load times are obviously great. But, you know, take a look at what we saw with um, Unreal Engine 5, which I did a full breakdown of. You know, the Lumen and, Nan and Nanite tech is really cool. And of course, that's the backbone of what we can see with this next generation going forward. But yeah, I guess signing out the video and making it a TLDR this tech is really cool, what we saw with Insomniac. However, it doesn't confirm 4 or 8-bit operations. It just basically means that there is machine learning inference being ran. However, we don't know exactly know how it's run on the GPU. So it's cool. It looks awesome. We just don't exactly know how it's being ran. But hopefully we know more soon. With that said, thank you very much for watching the video. Take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.